Medieval and fantasy builds have become a staple in the LEGO community. Between the collectors and mock builders, this is definitely an area where people want minifigures. So let's take a look at all the castle, medieval, and fantasy CMF figures that LEGO has made. Now, there are a lot of figures outside the collectible minifigure line that is great for fantasy stuff, but I only want to look at the ones that came in the minifigure line, also known as CMFs. When we think of medieval and fantasy worlds, the first thing that probably comes to mind is knights. The first knight we ever got was the evil knight from series 7. His shield has a red bull symbol that's very similar to the red bull seen on the Black Knight from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. After that, we got the Heroic Knight from Series 9. He has a white and light bluish gray color scheme, and uses a crown symbol on his shield that is very similar to the 2013 and 2007 Crown Knights. Later, we got the Frightening Knight in Series 15. Due to the bear on his shield, many call him the Bear Knight. According to his bio, he was so frightening he was kicked out of the Fright Knight faction. This wasn't the only reference to the Fright Knights in the CMF line. In Series 19, we got the ghostly figure of the Fright Knight. This is the only Fright Knight shield to come in this style. The final reference to the Fright Knight so far is the Vampire Knight from Series 25. Not only does he come with an updated Fright Knight shield, but the figure is an updated version of Basil the Batlord, the terrifying leader of the Fright Knight faction. Even though it's just a kid in a costume, the Knight of the Yellow Castle came in Series 23. She harkens back to Set 375, the first castle set LEGO ever made. She also comes with a stick horse, which is a reference to a wooden toy LEGO made before they made plastic building blocks. A great thing about this figure is that if you remove the armor, you get an amazing printed tabard torso, which just gives you more customization options. Another reference to an original castle faction is the Falconer from Series 24. She is a reference to the Black Falcon faction, which first appeared in 1984. This figure is also the first time we got a falcon, which is perfect for any medieval world. This is not the only bird faction we got in the CMF line. We also got the Tournament Knight in Series 20. This figure has become very popular among fans due to its unique color scheme and and faction symbol. Probably the best knight we have ever gotten came in the D&D CMF line with the Dragon Paladin. First off, he comes with a brand new shoulder slash chest plate armor piece, which has an amazing generic print on it. He also has a great sky blue shield that has a Bahamut symbol on it. But if you take all that off, you get this fantastic printed tabard torso, plus armor printed arms and legs. The variety of printed parts allows for some great fig barfing. This is the only figure to come with a gold dragonborn head. We have seen it in green in the D&D set, red in the metal dragon beatbox video set, and finally in medium blue in the video bandmate season 2 set. If you want some more parts to make dragonborns, the green dragon costume from series 23 is perfect. And if you want those parts in red, you can get the dragon suit guy who came in series 18. If you have an army of knights, you need something to protect, such as residents of a castle. For a great generic princess, we got a fairy tale princess in series 12. To rule your kingdom is the classic king from series 13. With him is the queen from series 16. According to both these figures' bios, they're the monarchs of the Yellow Castle. In Disney series 3, we got Prince John from the 1973 Robin Hood film. To entertain your royalty is the jester from series 12. Even though we have gotten a few other jesters, this one sets itself apart with its purple and light orange color scheme. To entertain your kingdom, not just the nobles, is the troubadour from series 22. For filling out your peasants is the goat herd from series 25. His parts are perfect for making more peasants or some custom forest men. This figure also comes with a white goat. Whether it's barbarians or orcs, every fantasy world needs a horde that's pillaging through it. For barbarians, you have a few different options. The Barbarian came out in Series 11. A figure that's connected to him is the Fierce Barbarian that came out in Series 25. They both have the same symbol on their belt buckle. Three other figures you could add to the horde is the Highland Battler from Series 6, the Warrior Woman that appeared in Series 10, and the Han that appeared in Series 12. From the Upper North came the Snow Guardian, who came in Series 22. He also came with a Husky. If you want to do a more Orc-like horde, the Orc from Series 24 is a perfect start. He is a throwback to the 2008 Fantasy-era Troll Faction. The great thing about this figure is he comes with so many parts that if you get multiple of him, you can mix and match them to create different ranks of Orcs. Another figure that is perfect for filling out your Orc army is the Goblin from Series 13. The olive green skin of the Cyclops from Series 9 makes him another great addition. You could either mix and match his parts with the goblin and orc, or just use him in the army as is. 
Also, if I'm going to mention the Cyclops, the Lady Cyclops from Series 13 is also a good addition to either a Horde or Fantasy World. There have been a bunch of other mythical monsters to flesh out your fantasy world with. A very useful monster is the Minotaur from Series 6. In Series 25, we got the Harpy for when you need some sort of flying creature. Minifigure Series 14 was filled with many different monsters. Honestly, most of them would work in a fantasy world, however, there are a few standouts. The Banshee with her floating leg part. You can never go wrong with a gargoyle. The Spectre has all sorts of good pieces. The Wolf Guy, if you want to add some sort of half man, half wolf. Square Foot can give another style a monster, and if you like him, I also recommend the Yeti from Series 11. A figure that sticks out from Series 14 is the Spider Lady. She's perfect as an evil witch or queen in any fantasy world and would pair nicely with the Vampire Knight. Speaking of vampires, we have gotten a few more of those in the Steam. In Series 2, we got the Vampire, who's your classic Dracula style vampire. If you want some minions for him or your Vampire Knight, the Vampire Bat came in Series 8. In the D&D series, we got Strahd Von Zarwich, who is a vampire with gray skin. He also came with a new black rat with red eyes. Another monster that came in the D&D line is the Mind Flayer, which are known for their tentacled faces and powerful psionic abilities. It comes with an intellect devour, which can actually go over a minifigure's head. There are not just monsters in the CMF line, but also mythical beings and races. Series 22 gave us the Knight Protector, who has many great parts for fantasy figures. A figure who could go great with her is Orion from series 26. I could definitely see his torso being great for some Greek or Roman style soldier. The unicorn guy from series 18 doesn't have the best parts, but does come with a unicorn shield, which you can use to make a new faction. We have gotten a handful of half-human, half-animal races. The first is the Fawn, who came in Series 15, who comes with a flute. Another is the Centaur Warrior, who came in Series 21. Her arms are great because they have printed bracers on them, and her torso is perfect for any forest dweller. In the D&D line, we got the RR Croker Ranger, which is a bird-like race that lives in high mountains and on top of tall trees. This is the first time we've seen this style of bow and dark tan. Previously, in Marvel Series 2, we got in brown from Kate Bishop, and black from Hawkeye. The ranger also comes with a small gray dog. There have been a total of three mermaids. The mermaid who came in series 9 has a light blue tail. Marsha, queen of the mermaids, came in the Lego movie CMF line. And finally, the ocean king who came in series 7 has a sand green tail. Before we move on to the next group, if you want more minifigure content, hit that subscribe button. One of the mythical races we have seen is dwarves. The first dwarf came in series 5 and was called the evil dwarf. He has a very similar design to the 2008 fantasy era dwarves. From the Boar Clan is the Battle Dwarf that came in Series 17. He wields an axe and a recolored Thor's hammer. From the D&D series came the Dwarf Barbarian. The torso has an axe amulet on the front and a horn print on the back. But besides that, it's a very versatile torso for different fantasy figures. It also comes with a brand new double axe piece. And finally, the Lawn Gnome from Series 4 could definitely be used as a dwarf. If you have dwarves in your fantasy world, you also need some elves. The elf came in Series 3 and is the only figure to have short hair with yellow elf ears. He comes with a very cool printed shield that has a deer on it. The elf maiden came in Series 17 and is just a beautiful figure. She has a small shield with a flower print on it. The last elf came in the D&D series. The elf bard has short white hair with skin colored ears. He comes with a printed loot piece and a gold cutlass. A figure I want to just quickly point out is Grip Hook from the second Harry Potter CMF wave. Even though there are a lot of figures from Harry Potter that could be a part of this list, the goblin hair piece from Harry Potter works well as elf ears. Also, the sword of Gryffindor is just a great piece. The elves aren't the only forest dwellers in the CMF line. In series one, we got our first forest dweller with the forest man. This figure is a reference to both the forest man castle faction and to Robin Hood. A figure that references the forest men in her bio is the forest maiden from series 9. She comes with a dark green shield that has a tree on it. The rogue came in series 16 and has this really cool hood slash mask piece. His bio mentions that he's a part of the wolf pack faction. To back this up, he has a wolf cape brooch on his chest. From the third Disney CMF line, we got Robin Hood, who's also based on the 1973 Disney Robin Hood film. If you want something that's a bit more fantasy for your forest, then the forest elf that came in series 22 is perfect for you. An excellent pairing for him is the Mushroom Spirit that came in series 25. Finally, from the D&D series is the Halfling Druid. He comes with a green hood that has rubber antlers. His torso is perfect for any forest dweller, whether that's a bandit or elf. In a land of so many fantasy elements, I feel like you gotta have a sorcerer in it somewhere meddling in the world. 
To start off, there is the wizard from series 12. This is your classic wizard look with blue robes and a pointed hat. To go up against him is the evil wizard from series 13. From series 16 is the ice queen who is the perfect sorcerer for a snowy fantasy world. We also got some witches like the witch that came in series 2. This is your classic witch look with green skin and black robes. Another figure who is like her is the wacky witch from series 14. Tasha, the witch queen, came in the D&D line. She has this really cool witch slash hair piece which we've only seen in the Hocus Pocus set. There are four other sorcerers that came in the D&D series. The first is the Tiefling Sorcerer, who has a horn slash hair headpiece. This figure stands out because purple isn't a color we get a lot of when it comes to minifigures and fantasy sets. It comes with a red baby dragon that as of this video is exclusive to this figure. After that is the Gith Warlock, which comes with a brand new knife design. Its hair is also great because it can be used as elf ears with a yellow minifigure head. We also got Saz Tam, who is an undead necromancer. He is the leader of the Red Wizards of Thay. The final sorcerer from the D&D line is the Lady of Pain, who is just a crazy figure. Between the rubber headdress and the cape, this figure just sticks out. LEGO has given us many castle themes over the years, but only two of them are not based around the European Middle Ages. So if you're into either of those themes, these next two groupings are for you. The first non-European based castle sets was in 1998 with LEGO Ninja. In the very first LEGO CMF series, we got the Ninja, who has a classic black ninja look and wields a gold katana. In series 3, we got the Samurai Warrior, who has a classic samurai look and uses the samurai helmet from the ninja line. We also got in series 12 another samurai who comes with printed samurai armor. Another figure who would go perfect with these minifigures is the Kimono Girl from series 4. The last figure who could be put in the world of ninja is the sumo wrestler from series 3. The second was the 2006 theme, Vikings. The first Viking CMF figure we got came out in series 4. This is the only figure to come with the metallic silver Viking helmet. He also had a one-of-a-kind Viking shield. After this was the Viking woman who came out in series 7. This is the only figure to have a long hair, Viking helmet combo. Finally, there is the Viking from series 20 that fans have dubbed the Realistic Viking. He has incredible printing, but what made this figure stand out is his Realistic Viking helmet. That's every LEGO Castle, Medieval, and Fantasy minifigures LEGO has released in the CMF line so far. Hopefully this list has helped you find some new figures to add to your fantasy worlds.